Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. Pride weekend brought the people to the streets. Whether to parade, protest, party, or do all three at once. And you know, in general, our city gets a lot of credit for being one of the queerest in the nation. But does the data match the vibes? It's Wednesday, June 7th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Salt Lake Tribune reporter Peyton Harkins, how queer is Salt Lake City? (laughs) I would say Salt Lake City is pretty queer. You know, 2016, we were among the top 10 queerest cities in America based on the Advocates ranking, which is like an LGBTQ focused magazine. You know, the Williams Institute, they've found pretty recently that we have like the highest percentage of same sex parents. Most of Salt Lake City's city council identifies as gay. We had the second Harvey Milk Boulevard. You know, we have all these kind of bullet points that show how gay we are. And, you know, and then and talking to some of the people who like live in Salt Lake City, one of the metrics that they used isn't, you know, super quantitative. It was just like this idea of like, can I be queer in Salt Lake City and be okay? You know, like, is that normal? Mm-hmm. And it seems like a lot of the people we spoke to, that is mostly true. So the answer is, I would say that Salt Lake City is pretty queer, but there's definitely room for improvement. Well, the Human Rights Campaign does a ranking every year around basically how queer-friendly cities are. And so I think Salt Lake got 100 in multiple categories. Yeah. How does that stack up against the surveying you did of people and how they feel in this city? Yeah, Salt Lake City got 100, and that's actually... You know, back in 2016, whenever the advocate first kind of put out the story that got this narrative going that Salt Lake City is super queer, Mm -hmm. we had a score, I think, of 66 or something like that. You know, that kind of shows you the discrepancies between the data sets that exist. But we've increased, you know, a bunch since then. We're now at 100. We're on the same bars like Portland, you know, and um, (laughs) Phoenix, Denver, all those places have 100. But yeah, we're actually the only city in Utah with 100. Park City is the only one that comes even close, and that's 70. But yeah, that that index looks at laws and things like that. It's a little more policy-based, you know, than just sort of vibes-based, which I think is kind of what the advocate was. Yeah. Well, how does it stack up against this, the kind of qualitative data that you got? Because I saw that you were surveying people for more like, you know, like you would say the vibes. Yeah. And it seemed, people were more wishy-washy, I would say, on hmm. the, our survey we did. We got about 100 responses. And the question was basically like, do you think Salt Lake City is, you know, a queerest city? Yes, no, sort of. And most like close to 50%, I want to say like mid 40s was was sort of. Mm-hmm. And, you know, about 20-ish percent were, were yes and no. And a lot of people are actually pretty thoughtful in their responses to us. It seemed the reason that people were wishy-washy was just the fact that Salt Lake City exists within Utah. I mean, like, we are subject to the the rules lawmakers make here and stuff like that. So it was like, Salt Lake City is great. However, we are at the whim of mostly conservative state where the cities don't score as high as Salt Lake City does. Yeah. Ironically, a lot of those laws are made in Salt Lake City, though they feel like an existential threat from outside the city. Why did you want to gather this data? Like, why did you want to learn how gay Salt Lake is? Yeah, I mean, it's something I've wanted to do, I would say, for a couple of years now. But, you know, when I first moved to Utah, I had never been to Salt Lake City. I'd never been to Utah. The furthest west I'd ever been was Denver. So it was, you know, I was Googling Salt Lake City, trying to figure out, like, what have I gotten myself into? And yeah. it's not that I was scared or anything of Salt Lake City because I'm from Oklahoma. You know, that's also a pretty conservative state. You know, I wasn't scared of the politics necessarily here, and I didn't think it'd be any worse than what I was experiencing there. But, Hmm. you know, I just wanted to figure that out. And so, yeah, we finally got a data reporter at the Trib, and, you know, we're like, what better time to interrogate this data than right before June? And so Salt Lake City touts it. That's one of the things that people say whenever you bring up Salt Lake City. It's like, did you know that it's so gay? And people are normally surprised. And so, yeah, we just wanted to to look into it and finally had the skills and the people who could. Yeah. Well, how does your personal experience compare to what the data told you? I think it's pretty on par, honestly. Like, I've never experienced anything bad happen to me, really. You know, nobody's ever, you know, maybe somebody's yelled a slur, you know, or something at me, but it's, I've never yeah. felt unsafe, you know, and I've done... I don't know. I I wish I was a better queer person, honestly. It's like, I don't do, you know, like Pride, honestly, was probably the most gay people I've been around in a long time. You know, I'm kind of insular, but yeah, I've never had problems here. And 
I too feel this like, you know, the fact that we're living in kind of like a, in a sea of red, we're in like a, a little bastion of blue. And I, I feel that, you know, like when I go down to Southern Utah, sometimes I'm worried when I go to the bathroom somewhere, you know, that somebody's mm. going to look at me weird or say something, but nothing's ever happened. So I, yeah, I'd say the data is pretty, pretty on par, you know, it's good, but um, definitely room for improvement. What surprised you reporting this story? Anything? You know, we got in that survey, you know, we had a sort of an open-ended response. And we got a handful of people who said some mean things. And it's not like I didn't expect the mean things. That that didn't surprise me. But yeah. I was honestly just surprised at how thoughtful people were in answering that question. Like, it seems like this is definitely something that has been on more than just my mind and my co-reporter, Megan Banta's mind, you know. Hmm. And, I, and I think, you know, I think it might be particularly on people's minds right now just because you know, we've, <laughs> the LGBT community has gone through some stuff in this state recently, you know, with the, you know, we almost had a don't say gay bill, lawmakers passed, you know, the bill effectively banning transgender health care and all that stuff. And so I think just sort of like, where do we fit in this state has kind of been on a lot of people's mind recently. And so, yeah, I was just like, you know, I was surprised and you know, it was kind of heartwarming, honestly, to see that so many people have been thinking about this so thoughtfully. On that note, you mentioned the bill targeting trans health care and trans children and trans girls that want to play sports. I mean, we've seen a lot of this type of legislation, a lot of amped up rhetoric by Republicans yeah. in this state against queer people. This past weekend was the annual Utah Pride Festival and parade in downtown Salt Lake. We ran into each other out and about. <laughs> what was your experience? Like, how would you characterize the vibe in light of all of this at the fest? Man, it was it was honestly really refreshing for me. It was like I walked to Pride and I walked there with my girlfriend and on the way there we were holding hands. And it's weird because like, I don't know, I, I'm i fine with PDA. Sometimes I'm not fine with uh, the people who might see the PDA and what they might say or do. And that's been kind of a weird thing that I've been wrestling with recently. But anyway, you know, we held hands on the way into Pride and then went through the ticketing area and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it just felt like, you know, it's like I just felt like all the stress and stuff that I didn't even realize I was like carrying around on my person each day. Like I just felt it kind of evaporate because I was like, OK, I am in like a literal safe space right mm -hmm. now. Like I am not the only queer person here. Everybody here is ostensibly supporting me doing, you know, this hand holding. And so I think yeah. that was really nice. I think I really needed that sort of affirmation, especially, you know, I live online quite a bit. And so like in the face of some of the, the stuff I see online, that was that was really nice. Yeah. It's hard to replicate that same feeling online, though there are a lot of ways that people find community online. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of not the same. I had a moment where I was like standing in line at Milk, mm -hmm. which is one of the like big gay bars. I would say Milk is probably more of a club, actually. Yeah, I'd say so. And just everyone lining up to go through security and thinking like, well, you don't go through security at straight bars, right? <laughs> Like yeah. just sort of that reminder that we have to take these precautions because the community is, has been under attack and that this rhetoric is frightening. Yeah. I don't know if you saw Robert Gerke's column where he just talked about how much more they spent on just security at Pride this year than normal. But mm. just because of sort of the, you know, the tone and the different rhetoric and stuff like that, they, they went from spending about 60000 on security at Pride. And this year they spent more than 300000 Wow. That's a huge jump. It really is. And I, I, I could feel it at Pride. You know, it seemed like the metal detectors mm -hmm. were more intense. And I don't know if this is true, but I mean, it felt like the perimeter around Pride was maybe bigger this year, you know, something like that. But yeah, certainly everything felt reinforced. Yeah. Hey, CityCast Salt Lake. It's Michael Zibiak. While CityCast Salt Lake works hard every day to connect you with the stories that matter most, I'm working in the background making sure that our listeners are connecting with the best that Salt Lake has to offer. So what does that look like? It means meeting with the people who make Salt Lake what it is. The business owners, the stakeholders, the decision makers, the Salt Lakers who put together those food festivals you enjoy, the concerts you attend, the exhibits you can't miss, and who make those candles your mom can't stop talking about. If this sounds like you, let me help you get your message out to the city's best audience with an ad right here on the CityCast Salt Lake podcast and on our sister daily newsletter, Hey Salt Lake. 
shoot me an email at ads at citycast.fm and let's connect. I saw, of course, recently that you called out Governor Spencer Cox over his Pride Month declaration. It was lukewarm. He failed to mention that the month celebrates LGBTQ people specifically. But last year, his declaration was a lot more specific. It very clearly outlined support for the queer community. As a reporter and as a queer person, what do you think that Cox's tone shift says about statewide sentiment? I don't know if I can, you know, speak for the entire state, but I mean, you can definitely pick up Cox's individual cooling off on this topic and you can, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe draw connections that others are seeming to cool off. I mean, you know, there was a controversy over that UTA bus, you know, like the one that was wrapped in pride colors and was going to lead their portion of the parade and then got pulled because of a last second decision to um, promote their energy efficient buses, you know, like maybe look further into that and see a connection. I mean, I know that when I read that declaration, the absence of just like the acronym of the people that it was supposed to celebrate was so obvious to me. And I would be lying if I said I remembered exactly what he'd said the two declarations prior. But, you know, I went back and looked at them and they were they were much more specific. And it was interesting, too, because I don't know if this sort of, I don't know if you could call it playing both sides, but it's like, you know, trying to honor Pride Month, but not say who Pride Month is about. I didn't see many people that were happy that he did this in the comment section and stuff like that. It's like the Pride Center said, they called it an irresponsible coward act of erasure, you know, and then some of the people who... That's direct. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite direct. And, you know, it's like the people on the other side of things were just mad that he said anything at all. And so it's like, you know, yeah. Certainly reading it, my thought was, who is this for? Like, if you're not going to name who the month celebrates, why declare the month? Like, what? who is this declaration for? Yeah, and it's like, you know, the, the Spencer Cox from 2022 who wrote the declaration that did say LGBTQ, he was the same governor who vetoed the bill that would have banned trans girls from playing, you know, sports off the girls team you know Mm -hmm. and it's like this last session he signed the bill that effectively bans health care for trans kids you know so that certainly appears to be a shift yeah also not the same spencer cox that we saw in 2016 when he was lieutenant governor and rose to political prominence nationally for his speech apologizing to members of the LGBTQ community following the Pulse nightclub shooting in Florida. Like, I feel like that was the first time that you started to hear people on the national political stage talking about Governor Cox. Well, you mentioned that the trip has a data reporter now. I mean, the identity of this city is ever evolving. What are you all keeping an eye on in Salt Lake and around the state as we continue to assess how safe it is for queer people? Yeah, hate crimes are something that we've been trying to follow for a while now. You know, I've done some reporting on them back in my police reporting days. And, you know, those aren't necessarily the greatest indicator of how safe or unsafe a place is because there's so many times that somebody will be victimized in some way and they're not going to call the police about it either because, you know, they don't think it was that big of a deal or because, you know, they don't necessarily trust the police, you know, or something like that. But, I mean, the state updates their database pretty frequently and we're going to keep an eye on those. And then, you know, I don't I don't really know that we're doing anything else sort of proactive in terms of keeping track of this data ourselves, but I would really love if somebody was able to replicate sort of what the advocate did, but maybe mix in some of these other data sources, you know, like look at gay bars and support groups and gay sports leagues and stuff like that, in addition to like laws and all that stuff and make your own little index to maybe get a more holistic picture of how queer Salt Lake City and everywhere else mm. is, you know, and I'd, I'd be interested to know like, Okay, so Salt Lake City's number one in Utah, but who's number two? Who's number three? You know, like, where else are these little enclaves popping up? Because it's like, you know, I interviewed somebody who grew up in Davis County, and they were telling me that, like, you know, the goal has always been to get to Salt Lake, but, you know, it's not easy for everybody to get to Salt Lake. And so it's like, are there other places in the state that stand out? Mm -hmm. I haven't really had a good time in Helper, Utah. I don't know if you've ever spent um, some time there, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love Helper. And it's like, they have a Friar Tux barbershop, you know, all their, Mm -hmm. all their little art shops have, you know, like queer flags and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm just, I'm curious who else in Utah is kind of catering to the needs of Utah's small but mighty queer population. Yeah. 
Something I also hear people mention often is that there aren't a lot of dedicated queer spaces that don't revolve around drinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, Under the Umbrella Bookstore, I think, is popular for being that, like a queer third space that isn't a bar. I would love to see like a map or <laughs> some data on like non-alcohol based or like non-bar queer spaces in the city or in the state. Yeah, I think that would be neat too. And I did a story once about like a LGBTQ birding group that would meet over um, on the Jordan River and stuff. And that was like a cool space. I don't know. That was like my people. It's like, I'm with the bird people. Yeah. I'm with the gay people. Like, this is great. But yeah, I would I would love more of that. And then, all, you know, obviously keeping track of that municipality equality index score the human rights campaign does, because as people fear, if we do see kind of further erosion of, you know, protective laws or, you know, rights and stuff like that, I mean, that would be, that score would be a good indicator of where the issues lie. Salt Lake Tribune reporter Peyton Harkins, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Peyton mentioned this, but yeah, the Utah Transit Authority pulled their bus from the Pride Parade that was wrapped in rainbow decor with slogans like, Ride with Pride and Move with Pride. After the transit agency tweeted its excitement about the bus to its 50,000 followers, one Republican state representative from Layton, Trevor Lee, tweeted that he didn't think taxpayer dollars should be funding the agency's involvement in the Pride Parade. Though in truth, the bus wrap was actually donated. He and some of his colleagues at the legislature called up the UTA and forced the bus to be removed. Representative Lee told Axios Salt Lake it was, quote, to protect both sides. UTA still participated in the parade with a less festive vehicle, and they offered free fares to attendees. Now, fortunately for us, Pride is a month, not a weekend. And that means this weekend brings a second Pride Festival to our city. Pride Without Police is hosted by Salt Lake Mutual Aid, Wasatch Tenants United, and Armed Queers. It's this Saturday, June 10th from 2 to 10 p.m. at the Fairmont Park Main Pavilion. There will be free food, live music, as well as a handful of speakers. Masks are encouraged. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. Thank you for listening. We will be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. 